NFL 2K5 brought the possibilities of future simulation football to the forefront and had football fans like myself applauding its execution, realism, and true form to the game of football. NFL 2K5 was released in July 2004 with Madden 2005 slated to be released just a month later in August of 2004. At this point in time, Madden was not the solidified title that it is today, for better or worse. Now being 25 years old and looking back at the time I spent playing all the Madden games growing up, it's impossible to ignore the parallels and coincidences between the two before EA ultimately bought the NFL rights exclusively effectively eliminating any competition. I will touch up on these things throughout the video. Keep in mind, all footage shown is only captured in 30 frames per second for video purposes as I run this game on the PC emulator. However, when I'm not on screen recording, I can play this at 1920 by 1080 in the constant 60 frames per second. Keep in mind, you do need quite a solid rig for it. I first got NFL 2K5 for the original Xbox back in 2006. My mom's boyfriend at the time gifted it to me as a birthday present. It was probably the best gift I got aside from an Xbox 360 the following year. Instantly, I became immersed in the magic that was ESPN 2K5. It not only looked, but felt real. I was blown away by how much weight the players had to them. The player models always seemed way bigger and beefier compared to Madden's. Chris Berman talking to me and breaking down every play that actually happened in my games. I remember when I first created a player and basically shit my pants when the commentators, the PA announcers, and Chris Berman all would pronounce my name. The presentation instantly sticks out and breaks away from any Madden generic title sequence of the two teams that are playing for 10 seconds, preceded by the coin toss, and then just straight to the kickoff. Another aspect I noticed now in comparison, perhaps I didn't back then, being young and naive, or maybe just to upgrade in our technology, is that the audio in this game is flawless. Now, is it flawless in general? Of course not. It has its couple shares of miscues and glitches, but if we are comparing this game to any Madden that's ever been released, it is 100% flawless. Anyways, my point is this game holds a lot of nostalgia value for me personally, as I'm sure it does with many others. And the only way something makes you hold on to it like that is when it touched your life in some way. I remember when Madden up to a point gave me the same feeling, staying up all night with friends, playing training camp in franchise mode with our teams, or linking up four controllers and we each play different positions on the same team. When I finally learned how to use the emulator and set up 2K5 properly though, I was up 24 hours playing franchise mode and got the notion to make this video because I can't be the only one who relates. So what happened to 2K and where are we now? As most of us know, the villain of game publishers Electronic Arts essentially murdered 2K's involvement of football simulation video games. In December of 2004, Money CNN released an article written by Chris Morris, a columnist of Game Over, discussing the huge deal EA made with the NFL alongside the long-term effect it could bring to the consumers. Quote, in a conference call earlier this year, Electronic Arts said it would take any necessary steps to protect its flagship Madden franchise, but nobody was expecting this, end quote. This shook the gaming industry and caused a lot of not only consumers, but game developers to raise an eyebrow at the whole predicament. The article goes on to read, quote, it's probable Take-Two would have had to raise prices next year, subsequently for research. What we'll never know is how many fans would have stayed with the brand and what the long-term effect would have been on EA's business, end quote. Take-Two naturally spoke out against the announcement, saying, quote, we believe that the decisions of the NFL and Players Inc. to grant an exclusive license for video games do a tremendous disservice to the consumer limiting their choices, curbing creativity, and almost certainly leading to higher game prices, end quote, it said in the statement. I highly suggest you go read the article to really see the bigger picture as to why Madden is the only source of video games we have today. Revisiting this game and whilst trying to produce this video, I was curious to see what others' perceptions were of what happened between the two games and ultimately two game developers, and I came across some interesting things I never knew before. In September 2019, Denageek.com released an article titled How Madden Became the King of the Gaming Gridiron. It's the most recent article I could find, so I thought it was good choice to choose from. But as I continue to read, I realize a lot of people, including the writer himself, probably never noticed how many concepts Madden really took away from 2K's games. I will discuss this further in the gameplay section of the video, but for example, Madden 2016 introduced precision passing, while NFL 2K5 already had maximum passing. Madden 2005, of course, introduced the beloved hit stick, but how come no one correlates that NFL 2K5 not only already had a big hit feature, but it was part of the maximum tackling that ironically uses the right thumb stick as well. You could choose to wrap up your defenders or just hit them normally or go for the big hit. Another thing I found beyond ironic while reading this article is learning that Sega actually went to EA first and asked them to build a football game for them on the next gen console. After EA declined, Sega went and acquired Visual Concepts, who ironically helped EA develop earlier versions of the Madden games. Why is this ironic, you ask? Because less than a year later, EA bought the rights to the NFL, making it possible for the game developers who they turned down for help making another game that was better than their own, and ultimately would have outsold them if they allowed them to continue making the series. So I can't help but ask, what if EA did accept Sega's offer and they could have just collabed instead? 
we wouldn't just have EA's Madden, but we would have both EA and 2K working on which would probably be Madden today. But as most things end up being about, in the end, it was about money. EA didn't want to share any rights and EA didn't want any competition, even if that meant for the better football games in the future. I debated on combining this section of the video and the presentation section into one, but decided against it as I wanted to be as in-depth as possible. For this part of the video, I want to focus on the football-related themes, details, and overall football immersion NFL 2K5 brought to the table both on the field and off the field. The word aesthetic is defined as, quote, concerned with beauty or the appreciation of beauty. So how well does 2K5's commitment to football aesthetics hold up even 15 years later? Could a game made 15 years ago possibly hold up to the visual hardware we are gifted with now? To the contrary of popular opinion, it was never about how pretty the graphics were to me, even when this game first came out and I first played it, which not to mention still look amazing today. Attention to the smallest of details, even in this aspect alone, is what will always give NFL 2K5 an edge over not just Madden, but any football game ever made. The environment you are thrown into as soon as you start up the game is pure football nostalgia. I'm willing to bet almost every diehard football fan who first played this game and shed a tear at how hyped the intro was. Terrell Owens signing the camera, while Chris Berman hyping you up to win a Super Bowl, taking you straight into the main menu where you first hear the glorious Sports Center theme as the main soundtrack for the game. Now originally, I was going to do a video by video comparison of this game in Madden, but decided not to. However, I will be making subtle comparisons throughout each section as to what this game had and Madden never did or still doesn't even practically in 2020. Which brings me to my first point of the main menu music. Madden's soundtrack has always been a staple of the game itself. You can argue it, but you can't deny it. It's always featured famous and well-known artists, rappers, and singers, both with songs of their own and ones they recorded specifically for the game. As to where NFL 2K5 always relied on its immersion and not what appealed to the majority of users. My point being if you were to open up Madden 20 today, like right now, you are met with a compilation of random in-game clips to some irrelevant rap music. Yes, it's lit and pump me up. I'm not gonna lie. It, it was hype as hell the first time I opened up Madden 20, all right? However, you then have ads for Mutt instantly thrown in your face before you can even reach the main menu, which once you reach is beyond thin even in 2019 compared to what earlier Madden's offered. I mean, why are you getting advertisements for a game you already paid $60 for? NFL 2K5 focused a huge amount of resources on making their game grounded in both football aesthetics, football environment, and also the immersive presentation, which I'll explain later. Even to this day, I have yet to see a cheerleader in any Madden title. I can't even remember any recent entry that gave you cutscenes of the fans. One year they even cut out the referees and blamed it on the hardware not being able to handle rendering them with everything else. This was with the next gen consoles, mind you. NFL 2K5 was no question ahead of its time, both creatively and technically. T -t 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 Today, Junior? <laughs> I remember the first time one of my players got hurt breaking his leg in a game in franchise mode and the cutscene that ensued. A couple of trainers run to the field helping him up while another was driving a fully rendered car and some teammates helping him up and talking to him, making sure he was okay. And not only that, but he was reacting 100% correctly as if he in fact had broke his leg. I was honestly blown away. Now it's little things like these that may not seem like such a big deal or maybe so grandiose to just the casual football gamers, but for people like me who love the sport or those who have played at a high level or maybe just have played it in their pastime and want to be immersed, it was truly something up to that moment none of us have ever experienced in a video game. It was pure football aesthetic. The environment 2K5 surrounds you with both on the field and off the field is pure football greatness. The chain gang will come to measure the ball if it's a close call, the players will throw their helmets on the sideline if they are struggling or your coach might throw clipboard on the ground. When you score a touchdown, pick up huge yardage, or even pull off sick jukes or moves, it will cut to your teammates celebrating together on the sideline or your coach being happy as fuck. In other times, you'll see your players celebrating with the teammate on the field, whether it be jumping up to each other, a butt smack, various handshakes, or simply talking trash to the other team. There are literally so many variations of all these little things, which is why 2K5 is praised as it is even till today. It's plentiful replay value made the game feel fresh every time you played it, no matter how much you played it. The fan interaction in this game is absolutely incredible. Regardless if they look a bit outdated and blocky now, they actually interact and talk with one another and aren't just stand-ins. You can see fans tailgate before games, hold up various signs in the stadium, you can see them coming into the stadium through security even, or see them leave early when it's a blowout. They drink beer, buy peanuts, celebrate with other fans, have their bodies painted, and on some occasions it will show your player jumping into the fan section after he scores a touchdown. I mean, I could make a full video on this alone. Sideline reports from an ESPN correspondent will pop up throughout every game in various forms of audio such as weather reports, game breaks, coaching adjustments made at halftime, injury reports, injury updates, and more. For the first time in a football game, I could actually see players' uniforms getting mossy from the grass and bloody from taking a huge hit or being dragged across the turf. 
which if you played football on turf, you know that will happen sometimes and it fucking sucks. I even vividly remember playing this on Xbox and seeing chunks of grass get stuck in Brett Favre's helmet after I planted him with a hard sack. Subtle details like these that showed how much 2K actually cared about getting things to be as realistic as possible from a creative aspect. If you never had the pleasure of playing NFL 2K5 but you decide to after watching this video, the clear laziness, lack of commitment, and lackluster effort EA puts into any Madden pretty much in the past 10 years will be instantly evident to you. The sidelines and the life it brings to the game itself are still light years ahead of Madden now. Whether it being cutscene after a play or you're on the field before, during, and after the play, the players don't all look the same or they don't do the same thing constantly and don't stand still all the time. There's an insane amount of animations related to what's happening on the field and some that I already mentioned earlier, and they react accordingly to what's happening on the field even if they come into contact with player models. This adds so much weight to the players you're in control of because when you can collide with every object on the screen instead of just clipping through them like a ghost in some other games... <laughs> That being said, it's so hilarious yet blood boiling how many times you see players clipping through each other in Madden 20 every fucking game. When a game that was released in 2004 has minimal to no clipping, while a game released in 2018 literally has clipping every few plays on every replay, honestly, it's mind boggling. Anyway, depending on the play that just happened on the field, you can see the coaches jump up and down in either joy or anger. Players putting their heads down, others getting Gatorade, and players on the phone with the man upstairs after you score a big touchdown or make a big play. You'll see a player and coach going over the playbook once in a while or having a one-on-one -on -one discussion, but the biggest and most noticeable thing between NFL 2K5 and any Madden ever is that the player's reactions actually make sense to the events that are occurring. The cameraman fall if you run into them and they actually shift according to where the action is happening and don't remain static. Players won't get up and walk away when they're hurt either. Did I mention the fucking awesome custom celebrations feature? Yeah, you could choose up to 5 celebrations to animate once you scored a touchdown and you could swap whatever ones you wanted at any time. Which ironically a few Maddens to come featured celebrations but they were nowhere near fulfilling as in 2k5, at least for me. You only had a few buttons that had preset animations and you had a few cool flips and dives into the end zone. Nonetheless, NFL 2K5 was the first football game to incorporate this. Off the top of my head, the only thing that NFL 2K5 didn't have aesthetic-wise was the helmets coming off on the players who got smoked with a hit, and that's a strong, strong reach. NFL 2K5 instilled emotion into its game, and it made you feel like you were actually there, and what you did mattered and had consequences. Probably one of my favorite features of NFL 2K5 ever, and I'd imagine for most of you as well, was the crib. Now, I'm putting this into the category of football aesthetics and environments because that's exactly what it is. It brought you even that much closer to feeling like a baller, a superstar athlete, a hotshot celebrity. All of you that played this game as much as I did know that the ins and outs, but for anyone watching that may not have played nearly as much as all of us, or maybe not played at all, I'll break down the basic idea. NFL 2K5 uses a profile system called VIP, very important person, that you can connect with your own personal person, if you will. You earn crib credits to your profile by completing various challenges and milestones. Every game you play and finish, you will earn a specific amount of crib credits. Positive things you did in the game, such as scoring touchdowns, getting interceptions, and winning the game will earn you points. You can never lose crib credits you have already attained, but negative plays you make in-game will deduct crib points you've earned total for that particular game. So things such as fumbling the ball or giving up a safety will minus points from your total. The more positive a play it is, the more points you get and vice versa. These milestones range from player achievements, franchise achievements, team achievements, playing certain game modes, meeting certain requirements, and so on. Crib credits are used to buy items and deck out your crib with team spirit, style, and flair, or your personal achievements and trophies you've gotten while playing the game over the span of time. There is a wall dedicated for every specific milestone you achieve in your trophy room where you can go bask in your glory days or reflect on the long road it took you to attain them. The VIP system is more gameplay related so I will discuss that in detail later on. But the crib phone was one of the most standout features of the crib in an NFL 2K5 but relates to that as well so I can wait for the gameplay section for that. It gave players a reason to keep playing and not only that but kept challenging them to get better and up their football IQ. You even got 10 free credits every hour that you were playing. The crib is a big part of what made players, including myself, feel like I actually was a pro football player or a head coach of a football team. Hey guys, I just want to thank you for watching the video. If you want to stick around and watch the other two parts that I'm going to upload soon, uh, you can hit that bell or hit the subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Uh, I'm going to put gameplay in its own uh, in its own video in part two. Gameplay uh, and the game modes. And then for the final part, I'm going to do the ESPN presentation. Uh, the game options and features like the sliders and create a player and all that good stuff So uh, if you want to be uh, make sure you see those videos first You just hit that bell down right below this video and you'll be notified as soon as I upload them. Thanks guys. Have a good one